but then again, there it's like, I don't know. I haven't really heard a lot of good ideas. I guess the one idea from us would be a guy like Jalen McDaniels in Charlotte, who's a pretty decent two way option, very good disruptive defender, great long physical profile at six nine with like a seven foot wingspan, I think. But he's going in into a contract year and that kind of seems like that contradicts you're not going to trade a trade a guy that's you know i mean this is a guy that is mostly going to look at being a prominent role player off the bench probably for his career maybe a starter not like a, a primary scorer or anything like that but you know this guy is going to want to get his money you, you, you this it feels like he'd be a pretty big risk to slip away from you in free agency um it kind of seems like the antithesis of the overall goal of my Monty McNair. So I don't know. And also it's like, what are you giving up for that? It's just a lot of questions. And, and it just seems like maybe that's why the backup wing doesn't get as much talking about as the backup five. It's just because there just seems like there's not so many realistic solutions. Is that a fair assessment? It's very fair. And I think what's most important in any trade scenario is what the Kings have to give up realistically. And realistically, the Kings have two trades max, in my opinion, like one decent and one like minor guy. So if you want a good backup, you want a decent backup center, then you're not going to get, get a good backup wing. If you want a good backup wing, you're not going to get, get a good backup center because I mean, like I said, the Kings are a playoff team right now. You want to keep that core intact. And yeah, you can get rid of some guys who are going to be uh, free agents next year, but that also includes a guy like Trey Lyles. Are you are you okay giving up Trey Lyles, an important piece off your bench right now, if you are trying to make the playoffs? Terrence Davis, I see a little more expendable than Trey Lyles at the moment. He's going to be a free agent next year, and then you have guys like Alex Len, who I don't know <laughs> what you're really going to get back for Alex Len, other than okay, we need to drop two million to get this guy. Here, take Len. And then, of course, of course, Rashawn Holmes, who isn't a free agent next year, but is obviously has to be, or I think a report came out that he is available in trades. Um, and he's making $11 million a year, two more years left on this contract. Um, but again, he's having a very down year for a guy making $11 million a year. So it might be hard to move him. Um, so who knows what you can get back for Holmes? You might get back worse than what you would hope for Holmes like a year or two ago. And then you have second round draft picks because you can't trade your first because that's uh, it was included in the Kevin Herter deal. So, I mean, so between Trey Lyles, potentially, right? I'd say Trey Lyles is almost kind of off limits at this point with the way he's been playing. So between Terrence Davis, Alex Lynn, and maybe Rashawn Holmes and a couple second rounders. I mean, what can you really get back for that? That's why I'm like two two trades max. Yeah. And maybe maybe you can squeeze in for like a multi team trade. But I think you really have to put your cards in either the backup five or the backup three. And obviously, I think the backup five is a little more uh, it's a little There's more necessary at this point. Yeah, and I think. One thing that's important to point out is that, you know, because we were just laid out that the backup wing essentially is kind of done by committee. Uh, it's done based on matchups. It's kind of in a way, I mean, it's Chemezi Metu's the backup five, but you have different combinations of guys around him. Um, Mike Brown has described kind of having to, he's been asking Casey Akpala to guard point guards so that when the opposing team runs a pick and roll. Akpala will end up on a big guy. So you don't have a small guy on a big guy. You still have a lengthy, pretty decent sized guy on him. Kind of working with switchability in that second unit. He's like adjusting things to it. So in a way, that's kind of being done with the the tools and the pieces that they have. They're kind of throwing something together. So I think my, my overall point here is by fixing either the backup five or the backup three, uh, because they're both kind of done by committee or by matchups, it kind of helps the other one. Like if you get a steady presence at the backup three, that's going to kind of an indirectly help your overall second unit, which helps your backup five and vice versa. 